Hello, everybody. Have a wonderful afternoon. So today is our last class on differential equations for this term. And I think we have a small problem with the camera because it's very dark. And we tried to fix it, but uh, apparently, can you see me at least where I am? I, in the, on the monitor, I almost see nothing. So the most important thing would be that you can read what I write. Maybe you can give feedback whether you can read. Yeah. I can see where your head is, and I can see the writing. OK, so I'm sorry for this, but we could not. <clears throat> we realized it one hour ago, and we could not fix it. But I hope if you can read the writing, then everything is fine. In any case, we have, as it is the last lecture, we will be a little bit uh, going looselier. And uh, mainly, we will do one theorem, which is quite nice and beautiful. And <clears throat> remember, we had in the title, in the subtitle of our class, we had when algebra meets analysis and number theory. So we saw mostly algebra. We saw also a little bit of number theory, but not too much of analysis, except in the convergence proof of the normal form theorems. So today, I will do a little bit of analysis to complete this picture. And uh, again, it concerns the algebraicity of solutions of differential equations. So the, the running theme of this class was the following. If L in K x del a differential operator try to find criteria for Ly equals 0 <coughs> having a basis of algebraic solutions. Now, this is not only the theme of our class, but it has been a dominating theme for maybe two centuries already. So recall, if we have p, x, y, <coughs> a polynomial in y, and we have <coughs> of, let's say, degree m with roots y1 of x, ym of x. Now, this will be Fusier series. Fusier series. So these are formal power series whose, whose exponents are allowed to be rational numbers with bounded denominators, Fusier series. And actually, you can always assume this because the algebraic closure of kx will be Fusier series. So with root position, <coughs> then if, yeah, so <coughs> if L in kx denotes the minimal order differential operator annihilating all yi of x. So we have this operator, and we saw already that there exists such an operator, and we can take it of minimal order. Then n, the order of L, will be the dimension over k of the vector space generated by 1 of x up to ym of x. So this is, <coughs> yeah, this is less than or equal to m. OK? So if 
even if you start with a very simple situation where you just have a polynomial p of degree 2, so you have 2 y1 and y2, it's not clear how this first or second order differential operator looks like. Yeah? And uh, there have many attempts, many attempts to clarify this situation. And most prominently, this was the list of Schwartz from 1873, which I only mentioned, but never said anything about it. Uh, but you can look at the original paper, and there are also the list appears in many circumstances. Platonic solids appear, and it's quite explicit, a little bit complicated. Uh, or Boykos Heckman. in 1989. I will today, at the end of the class, I will come back to this paper. I will at least mention the statement. So both, <coughs> uh, at least, for special equations. Now what does it mean to be special? Either, either small order, or hypergeometric. So Schwarz did hypergeometric of order two, Boykos Heckman did hypergeometric of any order, and the general case of order two is still open. Uh, and another special cl class was what is called differential equations which come from geometry, either small order or hypergeometric or differential equations deduced from periods of algebraic varieties, which is a vast subject, from periods of algebraic varieties, <coughs> and these are called, called differential equations from geometry, whatever this means. And they also have a different name, or Picard-Fuchs equation. There's a precise definition, but I'm not going to go into this today and in the whole class because it would be too complicated. Okay. Nevertheless, we will do one special case today. Uh, so here, this last ca case here, the Picard-Fuchs equation, I should mention, of course, cuts. Starting in 1972, and then several other papers, he was the main protagonist of the study of Picard-Fuchs equations, and he proved the Gotenlieb conjecture in this setting. Okay. So there's one one note which is kind of strange. That one thing one has to keep in mind that that it does not so given L y equals zero. <clears throat> and let's say you do it number theoretically by reducing modulo p and its reductions lp y equals 0 modulo primes p, it does not suffice. to just look at one equation, at one solution, sorry, at one solution of LPY equals 0. Actually, instead, no, need basis. And moreover, 
it also does not suffice to look at 1p or to look at just 1 prime p. So you have to keep track of several informations, a basis of solutions, and actually for almost all primes. No, almost all primes will be needed, needed in the sense to be considered. And I think I gave you the example of a differential equation where for half of the primes, the p curvature is 0. And for the other half, the p curvature is non-zero. This was exp of the arc tangent. Okay. So this makes things complicated. And what is the program of today? <coughs> uh, the program of today is the following theorem, which I found uh, in the paper of Michael Singer. Theorem. Singer, so this is not in this book. This is in a paper which is called Algebraic Solutions and so on. You will find it on the internet, Michael Singer. And it's just over the complex numbers, so it has nothing to do with this characteristic p. But it's quite striking, and the proof is very nice, and I want to present you the proof today. So let L now in Cx del be an irreducible, irreducible operator. So recall that here we have a factorization in this ring. This is a non-commutative ring, non-commutative ring. But of course, we have a factorization, depending on which order we take. And irreducible means that L is not uh, L1 composed with L2, where order Li is less than the order of L. Okay. In this situation, the following holds <coughs> if y of x in Cx is one non-zero solution of Ly equals zero and algebraic, then all solutions of Ly equals zero are algebraic series. Okay. So this is, is purely characteristic zero statement. But when I saw it for the first time, I could not even believe it. But uh, it's true. The proof is not obvious. And uh, I am indebted to Michael Singer to explain me parts of it. So <clears throat> I want to do it today to a certain extent. Okay. So the main ingredient to prove the main ingredient is differential Galois theory. And I will explain this in a moment. And the monodromy group of L. We already had a, a glance at the monodromy group, but I want to do it in a somewhat more detail today. Okay. So combining these, we will prove this theorem or proposition, however you want.
OK, so let me see. Uh, Yeah, let me start with the definition of the monodromy group. So definition L in Cx del sp4. And we look at it uh, <coughs> y of x, a solution considered. Now we take it on the projective line on P1C. So we don't only allow a uh, finite point, but we can also look at Ly equals 0 on the whole projective line. Okay. So assume that L has order 0, uh, L has order, order equal n. And then we take a point A, let A be in P1C a non-singular point uh, of L. So as we have a non-singular point, we will have locally, let locally at A <coughs> have consider choose basis. Now, as we are in a non-singular point by cauchy kovalevskaya we have holomorphic solutions that locally at A. What am I writing here? Y1 up to Yn B. I'm sorry, a basis. Now, that's not very nice. Let me redo this. Once you start a sentence in the wrong order, you cannot. So choose y1 of x up to yn of x local holomorphic solutions. <coughs> at A of Ly equals 0. So now let me make the classical drawing, which I have, I think I have already done this. Now we take, here we have the point A. And let me do in red the singular points S1, S2, S3. We are inside, inside P1C. And we draw this as a real plane. And then we take a loop <coughs> like this. But we could also, we may also do, do something like this. So these are loops starting at A and ending at A in P1C minus s, and s will be s1, and so on, the singular points, singularities of l. OK? Now, <clears throat> here in our neighborhood, we have yi of x defined in a Euclidean neighborhood, Okay, holomorphic. And now we take analytic continuation. Extend yi of x analytically along every loop gamma. Let me write it like this, p1c minus s. And as we return, so along the loop, so if we look here now locally at the point B, again, we will have, by continuity, we will have a solution. So at any B, uh, I don't know how to write this, yi tilde of x, which would be here, yi tilde of x, will again be solution. 
will again be a solution of Ly equals 0. In particular, if we return to A, we get solutions at A. And this holds, in particular, for B equals A after the loop. OK? So this means as a basis remains a basis along the loop, that the output, which I will write the gamma star of y of x, now this is the vector. This will be the analytic continuation after the loop. So you extend along the loop and you return to A. This must be a linear combination, m gamma times y bar of x. So y bar is here uh, a column vector, y1 of x up to yn of x. I write this vectorial, and m gamma will be a matrix in with complex coefficients, but as you can invert the loop and go back, m gamma is easily seen to be invertible. So we have in GLNC. And this is called the monodromy matrix. of L with respect to A and gamma. Okay. So this is a purely analytic construction. And one goal is often to compute these, this monodromy matrix explicitly okay. for a given differential equation. So if you fix A, but let the loops gamma vary, you get a group. So let me denote this maybe by M of L <clears throat> and I should add here A maybe. This will be the group generated by all M gamma gamma loop at A. OK, so this is a monodromy group. Of L at A. And it only superficially depends on A. If you move A around, never taking a singular point, then the, this group will be just conjugated. So this is independent of the choice of A up to conjugation. Okay. So that's the first ingredient, the monodromy group. So I will drop the A, and I just write here. <clears throat> M of L. Okay. So a first proposition. And I am today I'm not giving all the details of the proofs, but at least the main ideas as usual. So <clears throat> we, you can characterize the algebraicity of the basis. So y1 x, yn of x, basis of solutions of Ly equals 0 is algebraic if and only if m of L is finite group. So <clears throat> idea of proof 
So now we have a different ingredient to, to look at the algebraicity. So <coughs> if, if for this direction, if the y are algebraic, so let pi of xy be the minimal polynomial of yi of x, then the analytic continuation will also fulfill this polynomial by continuity. Then the analytic continuation yi tilde of x, wherever you go, if you go the whole loop or just part of the loop, is again a root. Okay. So <clears throat> along any gamma or any loop gamma. And now uh, as it is then a solution of the same minimal polynomial, it will be a conjugate. Yeah? So gamma star, hence gamma star, after finishing the loop of yi of x, is a conjugate of yi of x, say in the sense that it is also a solution of the minimal polynomial. And now if you iterate, if you iterate, you will run into, after a finite number of steps, you will run into yi again. Yeah? So iterating the analytic continuation uh, reproduces eventually yi of x, hence m gamma is finite. The monoderm matrix is, is of finite order. m gamma to the k for some k identity. Okay. So you can do this for all loops, but you only have a finite number of loops up to homothesis to consider, and that's why, hence, m l is finite group. So here you know that uh, finitely many gamma suffice. You don't have to consider all gammas, only up to homotopy. Okay. And conversely, Conversely, if <clears throat> m gamma k of yi equals y, then uh, you, by the same reasoning essentially, you show for some k, uh, it follows that yi is algebraic. Okay. So you take again the conjugates and after one turn, after one loop, and you continue. Okay. So this is already an analytic or topological criterion. Uh, to see whether we have a basis of algebraic solutions. And <clears throat> of course, the singularities of our differential equation appear here implicitly as the loops have to go around the singularities. Yeah? But this is uh, mostly theoretical here because the computations can be very complicated. So there's also a an algebraically defined group, which is the differential Galois group, 
of the differential equation, and we come to it in a moment. So <clears throat> I, I will need a, a further proposition on this Galois group, on this monodromy group, in order to relate it to a Galois group, so proposition. And now we are more specific. Let L in C X del have only regular singularities in P1C. <clears throat> Let A in P1C be non-singular for L and take a local basis of solutions y1 of x, yn of x at a. Now we form the following field. Consider the field k. So we take, we adjoin all solutions, but also all its derivatives. OK. So of course, a differential equation, <coughs> if you derive a solution, you will also get an analytic continuation, and algebraicity is preserved. So then, the following holds. Let me, sorry, let me call this K of L. Yeah, because it obviously depends on L. The point A is not so relevant here, so I drop it. A, now if you take the action of ML on KL has fixed field Cx. So k of L, ML equals the rational functions. So this already relates to Galois theory. Uh, assume ML finite group say y1 of x up to yn of x algebraic. This is a case which interests us. Then cx inside kl is a normal extension. So separability is no problem because we are in characteristic zero. Okay. And ML, the monodromy group, is a Galois group over CX of KL. So in the in the setting of regular singularities and algebraic solutions, we can interpret the monodromy group, it was defined topologically in terms of a Galois group. Okay? And this is called the differential Galois group of L. And if you want to read more about it or learn more about it, there's a whole book by Singer van der Putt. Singer van der Putt which I can highly recommend. It's a lot of material. We do only here a glimpse of all this. Okay. 
So this proposition, you can find it again in the article I mentioned. So this would be in single algebraic solutions, where it is quite explicit. It is proposition 2.3. But you can also find it in the, in the book, but maybe in the article it's more accessible. OK. So that's, that's in some sense, the starting point of differential Galois theory. And uh, I will try to do the proof. So what about our time? Oh, yeah. Because <coughs> now we combine many different techniques. So I think it's quite nice to see this. So many of these techniques go back to Kolchin. So proof, again, maybe not all details, but the main ideas, proof. Let me see. So again, S in P1C set of singularities of L, so this is a finite set, and any solution Y of X at A not in S can be continued analytically to any B outside S, as we said before. OK? Now, as L has regular singularities, We can look what happens if we go with our solution, if we run into a singular point. Okay? And I think I mentioned this at the very beginning of our course, that having a regular singularity is equivalent by the theorem of Fuchs, that the growth of the, of the solution as we approach the singularity is moderate. <coughs> y of x grows moderately as we approach a singularity. Actually, we proved this also in the normal form theorem because we showed that we have, we showed that, that we have at a singularity, we just have logarithms appearing, characteristic zero, and these are moderate. So moderately means uh, at most polynomially. Okay, we will use this a little bit later. Now, if you derive y, this will also hold for the derivatives. This also holds. for its derivatives, which will appear here. Where do we have them? Here we have the derivatives of the solution. OK? Hence, for all y of x in k of l. Now, it is clear that the rational functions will be fixed, clear cx is contained in kl fixed point. Uh, so this, I leave it to you. That's easy, because rational functions are meromorphic, and so they have a unique continuation, and they return to themselves after one round. OK? Now we take the opposite, so let h be now fixed by m. L, 
Hence, the <coughs> gamma star there, once you do a loop, you return to H for all loops gamma, as before, starting at A and ending at A. OK? But if this holds, if, if uh, you get along any analytic continuation in the same map, this shows that H is holomorphic. Hence, H is holomorphic on P1, C minus S. Now, as you approach S, the growth is moderate, so you cannot have essential singularities there. Therefore, by the growth condition, H is meromorphic on whole P1C. Okay. So this implies, as we are looking globally, that also at infinity there can be at most a pole. In particular, infinity is at most a pole of H. But if this is the case, then H must be rational. But then H must be rational H in CX. Okay. So this is A. Now let's go to B. So if we assume now that y1 and yn assume yi of x algebraic, then we don't have to consider here the derivatives because they automatically can be expressed polynomially in the yi. This, we did this uh, quite a while ago. Then KL is already C joint X and just Y1 of X up to Yn of X. No derivatives needed. <coughs> and uh, now, uh, once you have here the minimal polynomial of these algebraic series, the conjugates will also be solutions. And the conjugates of the yix <coughs> are, again, solutions of ly equals 0. Hence, in KL. So here, uh, a hint, recall the construction of the minimal differential operator killing an algebraic function of minimal differential equation for yi of x. Okay. So this shows that the extension is normal because all conjugates are inside. Hence, extension normal. I hope you can still read here. Sorry. Yeah, it should go okay. And I allow myself to to add here because afterwards I will make the break and I don't have to to clean. So M of L acts on KL as we said before and fixes CX. Hence 
Cx is contained in the fixed field, Kl m of L. And conversely, <coughs> conversely, as m of L has fixed field C of x, it equals by Galois theory, Gal of Kl over Cx. OK? So that's some sense classical complex analysis and Galois theory combined together to give this result. So after the break, I will prove the theorem from the beginning. This will be then done using the Gronskian. And then after an example, I will also mention briefly the theorem of Boykos and Heckman, and then we will be done. So five minutes break, and we meet again. OK. Hello again. So we now start the proof of the theorem. It's mostly algebraic. So we know that we have one algebraic solution. Know that there is at least one algebraic solution of Ly equals 0. So let V be the C vector space by, generated by all algebraic solutions of Ly equals 0 of dimension. We know already the dimension m less than n, <coughs> which is the order of L. So show that m equals n. So now we, we take a basis here of V, choose basis. And now I will not write the x variable, because I need to write a lot. Choose basis y1, ym of v. And now we form the Ronskian with Ronskian y1, y1 prime up to y1, m minus 1 capital of y up to ym, ym prime down to ym, m minus 1. Okay. y underlined is the vector of these solutions. And <coughs> we denote by small w, y underlined, the determinant. Y, y. Now, we take, this is an m times m, m times m matrix. And we had this trick already once. Now we take a variable, choose, or let y be a variable, not to confuse with y underlined. Maybe I should call it z if you want. Maybe that's let that be a variable with symbolic derivatives. You remember that we had z prime up to z m. And consider now we add z, so I write as z by bar. Similar formula, just where we have in the first column the derivatives of z, and this is now an m plus 
plus 1 times n plus 1 matrix. And its term determinant will be now a differential operator in Z, OK? But we will de divide it by the determinant of the smaller matrix in order to make it kind of invariant. <coughs> then take determinant capital Z, Y, Z, Y bar divided by y bar, OK? Do I want to give it a name? Yes. I want to call this n y, where n is now, as all the y are algebraic, this will be in x, a differential operator whose coefficients are algebraic series. Recall that these are algebraic series. Let me call it n, OK? So <clears throat> n is the minimal operator annihilating all this. We have seen this earlier. n is differential operator of minimal order annihilating all yi. It has order m. Minimal order, this is m. OK, because we already assume that y1 up to ym are c linearly independent. OK? So now, what do we do with this n? We are almost done. Uh, we claim that n has, again, not algebraic series coefficients, but actually rational functions. Claim n is in Cx del has rational functions coefficients. Why is this so? So now we use uh, the proposition from before about the fixed field of our monodromy group. So proof of this, let G be in ML one of these uh, monodromy groups. Then <coughs> if we apply it We, if, if we apply G to our basis, we will get a different operator producing a new operator. So here we have N will kill all this YI. And if we take here the monodromy acting on YI, we will get a different operator, a new operator, which I call N upper G again in Cx del, and g will be, if we act g on v, will again be 0, OK? Now, we can compute this ng, where ng is given by the same formula, is given by we take as here determinant of capital W, Z, and then we let G act on our solutions Y, and the determinant of the Ronskian is G, Y. OK. So <clears throat> therefore, And G sends V into V. And, uh, and from this, and I leave it to you, it follows that NG equals N. 
Okay, you have to think about it a little bit. So it stabilizes V, yeah? So this implies that the coefficient, that the coefficients of n lie in the fixed field. of ML, say, in CX rational functions, and this is the claim. When's the claim? So now we have N inside here, and the only thing we have to show is that the order of N must be actually equal to N. OK? So finally, divide uh, L by N inside CX del. So Euclidean division. So we can write this L equals R composed with N plus the remainder. And the order of the remainder will be smaller the order than N. Now. <coughs> The order of n was m. Now, as l and n annihilate all yi, also l tilde annihilates l, all yi. But then l tilde annihilates, annihilates all yi just by using this formula. But n was already of minimal order doing this. Hence, L tilde must be 0 by order. L tilde less than order of n. So this shows, shows that L, which is R composed with n, with two operators of smaller order, is reducible. And this is what we want to show. So it's really a proof uh, which is worth to be digested because it has many different ingredients. Here is this Euclidean division, which appears almost magically and not nothing deep. The Ronskian, we are used to it already. And this topological ingredient by the monodromy group. So <clears throat> let me give you an example, which I gave you already quite a while ago, to show that uh, if the operator is reducible, then the theorem fails. So this was an example I gave you a long time ago, but I will recall it. So <clears throat> maybe one remark, the reducibility of an operator L or its irreducibility is very hard to grasp uh, conceptually. It's mostly a computational property as the reducibility of polynomials. And one has no philosophical meaning or interpretation how to to get from this condition on the algebraicity. So the example if L is reducible, theorem does not hold. And I give you an example which was communicated to me by Arlene Boston. So this is by K, Ying, and uh, Jinsi. Uh, it will appear in the notes. So we take LY. I write it down just uh, for your interest. Uh, the formula is not so relevant, second order. Maybe there are simpler examples, but 
this is the only one I know, plus 5y equals 0. So this is hypergeometric with parameters a equals 1 over 6, b 5 over 6, and c 7 over 6. And we have two solutions. The first one is very simple. Maybe you remember this was x to the minus 1, 6, so 1 over the 6 root of x, algebraic. And the second one is a hypergeometric function f2, 1, with precisely these parameters, 1 over 6, 5 over 6, 7 over 6, and x. And <coughs> by gross conditions, you can show, or by the Eisenstein criterion, you can show that this is transcendental. Okay. So this implies that L is reducible. Hence, by the theorem, L is reducible. And indeed, L is L1 composed with L2, or L1 composed with L3. For completeness, I give you the formulas. <coughs> I think you have them already, but to have it here, 36x, x minus 1 del, plus 66x minus 36. You have two factorizations, but they are very similar. Del plus 1 over 6x. So here you have rational function. Or you take, you multiply with x, and you get x del plus 7 over 6. OK. So it's not so obvious how to find this example. Yeah? A posteriori, you say, of course, uh, it works. But I don't see, I mean, one has to look more carefully at the paper of these two mathematicians to see how they discovered this example. Okay. So already in this example, uh, you see that <coughs> the irreducibility plays a central role. OK. I think I can erase everything. You have copied this. In any case, you can watch it again. And <coughs> I come to the last result of this course, <coughs> which I will only state without entering in the proof. But it's a very famous result. and. Uh, very beautiful, the theorem I mentioned before, Boykas Heckman oh. 1969, sorry, 89. 89. Now we are in the hypergeometric setting. Hypergeometric setting with parameters. We take not an order two equation, but of any order. Hypertermic with parameters a1 up to ak and b1 up to bk minus 1. And you should always think that bk itself is then 1 in q. Now. <coughs> Boykos and Heckman have a hypothesis that these do not differ, uh, that the differences without integer differences. This is also a condition which we also had for the local exponents in normal form theorem. But this uh, <coughs> assumption is probably not necessary not necessary by uh, recent work of Fjernsin, my students Fjernsin and Jokovic. They reduce 
this case of internet differences to the case of Boykos Heckman. Then the solution then, f k k minus 1 with these parameters, a1 a k, b1 b k minus 1, the b k itself is not written, x is an algebraic series. If, now it's a little bit complicated to formulate, but I write it down. If for all m between 1 and d with d such that, so d is a common denominator of our parameters, so that, that ai, aj, bj in z adjoint 1 over d times 1 over d, one has that. Now, to present the criterion graphically, we pass from the parameters to the exponentials. So we take exp 2 pi i times m times a j, and we do the same for the bj, <coughs> x 2 p pi i m bj. Now these are elements <coughs> on the circle interlace on the circle s1 inside c. So what do we mean by interlace? Let me draw the circle. You start here at level <coughs> zero, and let me let me choose two colors. Uh, I hope you can distinguish. Let me take the AJ in red and the BJ in yellow. I hope you can distinguish the colors. Then, if you if you fix an M, you always have. I should start. Yeah. Maybe you start with the A. And uh, interlace means that I draw them like this. They are always in between. OK. So these here are the AJ, and the yellow ones are the BJs. Okay. So that's a generalization of a theorem of, of, of the Schwarz did this theorem for order two equations. And uh, this, uh, the proof, they prove actually more. They speak about the Galois group, and, and they have quite a bit of machinery to prove this. It would be nice to have a more explicit and more direct proof of this. It relies or it relates to a theorem of Christoll, who is talking about the global boundedness, so the integrality of the coefficients of hypergeometric series. But here you have this fantastic picture with the S1. And this is a good point to finish this class and to say, Thank you to you, and uh, I appreciate your interest, your participation, and I wish you a wonderful vacation, and hopefully we meet again, either for an exam or at another occasion. Have a good time, and I hope to contact you soon or within the next weeks, sending you more exercises and also the notes for all the classes we had. I think we are, with the notes, we are at class number nine, and the last three are still missing, but this will take a while. OK, I think that's everything for today. We are nicely finishing in time. And goodbye to everybody. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you very much.